All right, hey guys, ladies and gentlemen, we're here yet again, and today we're talking about bulking. But over here, it's a Sunday, it's the 23rd or 22nd, whatever it is, of August, and uh, we yeah, are I fresh out of something called DC Fandom, and there's a whole <laughs> bunch of goddamn trailers and some shit like that. Nick, I know you're into your DC. Did you see any of the, uh, any of the stuff? Man. That- I was up early watching the fucking basketball and then like, I'm just like, hold up. I know what day it is. It's not even Taco Tuesday. All right. It was DC day today. Fuck me, man. What did I start off with? I started off with the, um, the justice league Schneider cut one. That was, um, did you like honest, the like, I, I did. And the music, like, like, cause I like that song, like the OG, like hallelujah song. Yeah. I was like, I like, oh, mean, like everything about that was just like absolutely perfect. Just the, I like the actual way, like they, um, um, what's the word? Um, when you're looking at like the color scheme of the actual movie, it's, it's, it's so much different. I'm just like, you, you kind of like mm. taking like a, do, like it's kind of like taking you into a different mind frame at all, but not just that. I mean, I've been so p- pumped up about um, Wonder Woman. That's probably been oh. my most excited one. There's more time pack, man. Yeah. The, like. And, the Wonder Woman ones that, like I've been hanging out for for a while because that was supposed to come out I think earlier this year, but um obviously due to Corona, um that yeah. and you know what surprised me most of all, what mm-hmm. the um Robert Pattinson Batman. Oh no! Don't even talk about it. I hate him now. Oh dude! Nah man, I, nah I man. That you. trailer. Have you seen this no. trailer? <laughs> no, the trailer. Have you seen this trailer? That, look, the trailer. That trailer. Oh my god! Yeah. That trailer was next level. <laughs> it might look good because of the VFX and all the effects, but Robert Pattinson is not a person who can fill out the position of Batman. He can never. Why do you say that? Because because the the way uh, the way I got attached to Christian Bale filling that filling that position out, um, back to back with uh, who was the other guy? Um, ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck was a much more serious figure. When he filled out Batman, I feel like Ben good. Ben Affleck really went with the character and he really dived deep into the character. But Christian Bale was also good. Christian Bale was good as well. And hey, hey, hey. Pratik. Mm-hmm. The movie hasn't been released yet. I know, but it's going to be shit with Robert Pattinson. In it. <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, God the VFX, VFX and the scenes are going to be good, Nick. As always has been because DC has been really great at that. But the person who is filling the role out. Come on, Batman is a heavy, I, heavy character. Just, just give it some time. No, give you know it what? time. Give it, give it time. You could overall, be right. It could be shit. Overall, I, I think you'll. I'm. I can't say I'm the same as Prime Tick, but I will say I don't know if you guys heard the drama. There was a whole thing about Robin Patterson because you're talking about how stocky and beefy he is. Apparently, there's some whole drama about him refusing to work out for the role. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I think yeah, he did a he certain was, amount, then he just stopped. Yeah, I thought that was pretty piss poor, to be honest. Because I know, obviously, there's many components of Batman. He's, like, the world's greatest detective. He's a martial artist as well. It's not just, like, the build, you know. Um, mm. But, man, this looks good. Good script. Do you like yeah. the feel of it, Nick? The music? I was yeah, I pumped do. out of my mind. I do. I, and, and, like, it was a, like, kind of fucking fucked with me psychologically just watching that. Like, you know that scene where he's just kind of, like... He's just kind of, like, intense mode. You're, like, watching him. You're, like... Oh, he looks angry. Like, he, mm-hmm. remember that scene in the trailer where you see Robert Pattinson? It's just straight on his face and he's like real intense. Man, that, that, that captured me. Is this before he uh, beat up that dude? That was yeah, pretty savage, he beat by the way. That, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was pretty, yeah, no, nah, like I'm pretty yeah. pumped about that, that as well. Um, yeah, that was definitely the best thing of the day, don't you say? Like, everything else is cool. I liked a lot of stuff, but that was peak for me. Plus, I wasn't expecting yeah. them to drop as much as they did in the Batman. That's only like 20% filmed. So that's yeah. more than just 20% of the film. I don't know. I'm, like still pretty, I'm, still pretty, right I'm still pretty pumped about um, Wonder Woman. That, yeah, I Wonder really Woman like that trailer be, as well. I love it. Because that first yeah, movie was good, really uh, good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. I liked yeah, it. She, uh, really fills in that, she really fills in that um, uh, position. Chris, P- Chris Pine, he's back in it. But you know who's in it, who's really oh, cool? Pilot. I know you watch Mandalorian. Um, Pedro Pascal, I think his name is. I watched him in Narcos oh. and he's awesome in that. He's in yeah, Game yeah, of yeah. Thrones. You know, he may have charged the mountain. <laughs> um, <laughs> Spoiler yeah, alert. Yeah, he, he's like one of the bad guys. And 
I I think he's awesome. Yeah, like, no, he's a good actor. He's, he's I was good just as, hoping yeah. for Batman. I was just hoping they would bring back the last movie and like get a continuation from it where he took away the bomb and then Robin was almost about to enter the scene. Or the I, um Christopher Nolan. Nolan, yeah. yeah. I was just wishing that 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 would come back and. And uh, they would do a continuation of that, you know, where Robin actually takes entry. Because that guy who was actually yeah. about to be Robin, he actually, I, I wanted to see what he could do because his acting yeah. was good. As a police was, officer, man, that, his acting was good. Joseph Lowe, go to yeah, that's, yeah, that scene where, um, so the Dark Knight Rises, yeah, that one. Bane, where yeah. he's um, in like Wayne Manor's house and he's chatting to Bruce Wayne. And he's mm-hmm. chatting about how he's an orphan and he recognized mm-hmm. the mask of like mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne straight mm-hmm. away and he knew it was a Batman. And he knew what it was like and all the rest. Like that was like like focusing on like a fake face in front of the mirror. Exactly. That was a freaking awesome scene. Exactly. Mm. I love that man. That was yeah. I think it kind of looked like it was going to set up it, didn't it? You know, mm-hmm. with the end, like go collect this and here's the back cave and yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the problem with DC is, but uh, they have this very uh, this huge problem of actors continuing and then going back to back with the movies. Like Marvel does it very successfully. You know, Marvel has. Yeah. If you see all the characters have stuck to it, not only Marvel, I would also say, obviously Wolverine. Uh, that's a part of DC, right? No, that's now Wolverine's, Wolverine's Marvel, Marvel, Marvel not the main universe, like it's not, not the main it's called MCU. It's, yeah, yeah. So Marvel has been successful at doing owned this. By Sony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Marvel has been successful at doing this, like retaining actors for the role that they're meant for, like filling the filling it out. Uh, uh, Hugh Jackman did a great role. Uh, followed by the whole team of Avengers that we watch. Uh, now we can't even imagine Black Widow without Scarlett Johnson. We can't. Yeah. We can't. Nobody can fill it. Ah. Give me one second. I need to visit the toilet for other reasons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck. Oh, no. He's pa- oh, because of Vulcan, yeah. <laughs> And do you oh, see um man. the Black Adam thing looks pretty good? Oh, he, he I love it. The rock, for it. the rock, the rock. He's he's. Did you see him like? Oh, che- did you see him like almost like cut a promo WWE style and all the other? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, that was oh amazing. Oh my god! Oh. That's what he's meant to do, you know? Because like some of the movies every he's done every are movie, pretty, yeah. but they're blockbusters. Yeah, they are. He's a guaranteed money. Um, yeah, he's um. I'm pretty sure he's grossed like eight. Was it eight billion? Eight, nine, nine or ten? I nine, think. nine, nine or ten billion mm-hmm. or something like that. Like that's how much his mm-hmm. movies have all grossed. I'm like, fuck. He's the one that saved the Fast and Furious franchise. Yeah, yeah. Single handedly. Mm-hmm. Single handedly, literally. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what else was there? There was Su- Suicide Squad. Do you uh see that one, Nick? I did. I did. It does look good. Will Smith's not in it, is that right? Yeah, he's or not is there. he not cast? Yeah. Um, but um, chatting about WWE and The Rock and stuff, so John Cena's in that one. Yeah. His role yeah. seems so stupid and so funny. <laughs> he said, like, yeah, he's a douchey Captain America, <laughs> and his one mission is called Peace Man is Peace, but he'll do it by killing people. <laughs> it's so stupid, but <laughs> <it's> so good. <laughs> As a director of. Um, of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. So imagine like that kind of feel mm-hmm. with these characters. It's like, I can't see that missing. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. going to be sick. What do you guys reckon? Like mm-hmm. when, when are these movies coming out? I know they just dropped that bunch of trailers and stuff. I think next yeah. year. Next year. Next I think year. Wonder Woman's coming out um, soon, actually. I th- but yeah. none of the movie theaters are open. next one. Huh? None of the theaters are open. Yeah. Unless... So they make the money... <sighs> Because I think America, like, um, obviously, you got a high view or something You guys like got a... How you guys go in America? Because I know China, they've got, like, a two-hour limit to movies. So, you know, The Tenant, that goes for two and a half hours. It's going to be released. They didn't release it because China's two and a half hours. And they didn't want to change the film. So, now it's late. Is it the same thing in America? You only have two hours. We don't have... Or no, we don't have... Our, closed. Our, our movie theaters are closed, yeah. Yeah. It's They're closed. not going to release it. They're not going to release anything this year. Like everything that was supposed to be released on the second half, I think they just paused it. I don't know what they did with it, but they just paused it. You cannot watch it. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> did you yawn or something? <laughs> I did. 
<laughs> you have one off camera, so I had no idea. That's why the camera is so close. There you strategy. are. Strategy. Strategy. <laughs> strategy. But no, it was a good day, man. I was just so amped up. Like that Batman trailer, man. That's mm-hmm. busy, busy. That'll be in my mind motivation. You guys got to watch awesome. this one. Uh, I was recently watching uh, on Netflix, The Umbrella Academy. The Umbrella Academy. Oh, I've seen that's trending. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's like a crazy. You've never seen a superhero movie. Uh, not a superhero movie, I would say. Uh, extraordinary uh, film or a series that real. It was, it's, it's crazy real. It's, and it's very weird. Mm. It's weird to the fact that you love it. So, mm-hmm. isn't it like some kids they get superpowers and they got to learn how to deal with it? It's something on those lines. Or? Yeah, yeah, it's on those lines. Yeah, I don't want to reveal much because it's a very interesting <laughs> one. You guys got to watch yeah. it. It's uh, on that uh, note on Amazon Prime. Apparently, there's a show called The Boys. I haven't the seen boy. it. Have you guys seen it? I've seen it. It's is it stupid good? as hell. Stupid as hell. Oh, really? <laughs> but it's good. It's like, like stupid good. Okay. Stupid good. Yeah. A good stupid. Yeah, yeah. It's got like, uh, it's crazy. It's got a Superman who lo- wants lo- other people to suck their dick. I, I love those tacky movies. They're so funny. As, they're funny as fuck. Uh, they're, they're funny. Yeah, you find it funny. Fucking I was watching. Funny. Um, have you seen Man from Uncle with mm-hmm. Henry Cavill? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. tacky. That's tacky as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the dumbest shit. <laughs> like, like, or like, obviously it's supposed to represent a sixties TV show, but like, I'm just watching this. I'm like. I'm like, it's, it's like the same where like he's um the, the, the Russian guy or whatever was like um up the girl's skirt <laughs> right? and then like he's playing around and then he comes back inside he's like, you turned on yet? And then <laughs> I was just <laughs> like, like, cause he was like trying to put a device on it, like trying to turn on the device. He walks, Henry Cavill walks in, um, turned on yet? And I was just <laughs> like... <laughs> It was so, really like so movie, tacky, man. so <laughs> corny. So, and I'm like, but it fits so well. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's uh, a, that's that's good. a good movie, man. Yeah. I think that scene where the movie. Russian locks the um, bathroom door. I don't ruin yeah. it for listeners, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that was such a good surprise, man. I love that. Uh, fuck. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's let's talk about uh, some uh, gains. Gains for the gods. Mm. Mm. Gains. Let's uh, let's start off like let's start off with um our own individual experiences, like going through you know what 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 have we found beneficial during massing, and what's the good sides about it? What are the ugly sides about it? You know, mm-hmm. let's let's start with you, Prantik. All right, I love starting <laughs> with you, man. Why? You, you you talk shit, so you know, like it's just it's just good to get you done and out of the way. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. What are we talking about? The good, the bad, the uh, ugly of Balkan? Yeah. yeah, just your experiences. So if you had oh, any like really mm-hmm. good off seasons, you have had like any dirty bulk, you had any bulk like too a... conservative, add no size, that kind of thing. Sure, <laughs> sure. Let's start with the dirty bulk. The dirty, uh-huh. dirty bulk. Uh, so uh-huh. <laughs> this was, this was a bad bulk. Uh, not a bulk, rather a wrong decision. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> make these, but they don't realize they're making it. But here we go. For all the for the benefit of humankind. Um, okay, this was uh, back in uh, 2011. Or, no, 2014. So six years from now. Um, so this was the first time when I went. Uh, why are you even thinking? I'm correct. Six years from now. It's 2020. So uh, <laughs> six years from now, um, this was when I was first trying to get uh, onto size. So what happened was, uh, this was my the guy who used to sell me supplements, and he recommended me the wrong pharmaceuticals. So it was it's very famous in the industry. Everybody knows it. Almost everybody takes it. The D ball, they call it the D ball. Right, yeah. Very, very famous, very, very strong, very potent. It's a steroid. So much water weight. <laughs> so much water weight. It's a steroid, uh, but everybody just messes around with it as if it's a daily vitamin capsule. No, it's not, guys. Uh, Amber a lot. It's a steroid, so be careful while you're using it. Um, so I was told to take um, eight 
tablets a day, each 50 milligram, uh, milligrams potential. Wait, hold up. So you're having 400 <laughs> milligrams a day. Yes, I was having 400 milligrams a day. So you're having uh, 2.8 grams a week. Mm -hmm. My maths. Yes. No. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Four, seven, seven times four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got there. 2.8 maths. 2.8 grams of <laughs> D-ball powder every week. So that's, that was powder. Why I say because D-ball is a pressed capsule. So it's basically powder. Yeah. And the after effects. That was the worst bulk ever. Uh, I was like... I was like Hulk in no time. I was like huge amount of strength, like massive strength. But first week was good. Then came the second week of um, pain and horror because uh, joints started paining. Uh, my, my elbow joint swelled up and uh, I developed bad, bad acne, like crazy mm. acne all over my face, mm. all over my back, right here. Like over a teenager. My Shoulder blades, yeah. It's all worse than a teenager. It was like painful yeah. acne. Um, I couldn't sleep on my back. And uh, it came to such a stage um, that I was like, wow, what's going on? This is really serious. I was getting like the gains of gods, you know. I was like massive. I went like huge. A lot of water retention and stuff. I used so to how much did you weigh at the start? Uh... Well, when Back I started with it, I think I, I started at 58 kilos. <clears throat> and then how much were you in how long? Afterwards? 70 kilos. So you gained 12 kilos in how long? In probably a couple weeks. <laughs> God damn. Hey, for the viewers, for the viewers, so you're taking 400 milligrams a day. Can you just explain to the viewers what's a normal amount daily? The normal amount would be, oh, be maximum... Uh, 100, 150 maximum. Okay. Uh, that's okay. for like six feet or 6.5, like really tall person. It also depends on the body weight ratio. So at that time, <laughs> I was taking 400 milligrams a day. So okay. add in three six feet people. That's what I was taking. <laughs> I was a great wow. Kali. Um, you so obviously yeah. <laughs> my liver was failing and um, that's it couldn't process all that and then there we go that's what it affects but uh, by God's so did you, grace, you, did you have two, three weeks? yeah I, by God's grace I found a trainer who's like are you gonna kill yourself and uh, he's like stopped right there so I stopped and uh, so when you stopped did you jump to something else or you just no I just stopped bit? altogether and then he gave me a piece and then of how tea. much did you how much did you retain of that? Like, so you went from 58 to 70 and then after yeah. you're done, how much did you drop back down to? I think I dropped back down to, um, 60 kilo kilos. <laughs> I dropped yeah. So it's about 10 kilos of water probably in about two kilos <laughs> yeah. of something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that was like the Jesus worst bucket. And, um, it took forever for those acne to go like a year. And uh, that two weeks uh. of acne developing, that went for about like six to seven months for the acne to, especially from my back, to mm. um, like actually like go up. I still carry some scars, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that wins. was that was a battle wound. Mm. Uh, that was something that I uh, hands up uh, confront to, and I never say I'm ashamed of it. Uh, a lot of people make these mistakes, but they don't realize what they're doing until it's very late. So. That's the benefit of getting a good trainer. Now, now, where is this person that told you to take those that amount? Where, where are they today? <laughs> that person is uh, failing majorly at his business. So <laughs> I bet he has told oh, someone fuck. else to take something else. And then that's Shit. it. Um, but yeah, that's dangerous. It's a very dangerous world out there. People don't know what it is for. They just sell, sh they just sell stuff and then they say, take this X, Y, Z amount. Don't go for that. Go with a personalized trainer who knows his stuff and um, who knows his business. Because uh, this is something that's life or death. So, yeah, bulking is dangerous uh, if you don't know how you're doing it correctly or not. So, that's the yeah. bad, um, the ugly, the ugly side of bulking. Did you have cankles with uh, all the water yeah. weight? Or no? 
You did, I yeah. Did. I did. I so did. one thing you hear with people that gain that much so quickly as well is, you know how like increasing weight usually helps training performance? Mm-hmm. Were you, did you ever have the stage where you do one set of like whatever and your lower back is just so pumped beyond belief? Did you mm-hmm. have that? Mm-hmm. That also yeah, used to happen. For training. example, biceps. Bicep yeah. training. I used to like great, like five kilo dumbbells used to give me insane pump. And I was like, what is this? And I'm like, Pump it and then it's like swollen and I'm like that's that's it. Swollen is the goal, size is the price. That's it, right there. <laughs> I and I used to drop the dumbbells and I, uh, I I was like it was like crazy. But at the same time, other problem symptoms and problems showed up uh, like mm. joint pain. Um, yeah. Joint pain was very common because no matter water that was retaining plus other because calcium and everything was I think was getting depleted at the same time. Um, mm. Protein synthesis like went down, way down, um, and I feel like I didn't give it enough protein. It was not obvious; it was not enough. Four hundred grams um, would like synthesize so much. It would need so much protein to synthesize and retain. I think that's why it was creating so much heat in my stomach. Um, there was like a super exothermic reaction uh, for which the body's soft parts, like my face, obvious face is a soft part. And the back, yeah, that's your next soft part. Those came like blistering out. Yeah, so that's the ugly you guys. Got, <laughs> you got a pretty defined face. Was your face like a legit circle? Is it a circle? As in when you're on the um, D ball. It was. It was like. It was a balloon. Yeah, that's, that's all I can say. <laughs> I don't have. Unfortunately, I don't have pictures from that time. Um. This was before I found my trainer, and uh, it was like that, that. Yeah. Mm. Is it that? Because it's all the water. Fucking hell. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have taken some beating, but I've learned a lot from that. And then I'm saying, I'm like, I'm never going down this path. I, 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 absolutely, from that day onwards, I've never taken deep ball. Uh, I've never had the need to. Uh, yeah. And those who especially those, not 400 mg's a day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, especially those who think that D-ball is going to give them weight. Uh, it's going to do more harm than good for your body. So don't stay in the midst of having D-ball. D-ball might be very quick and um, very quick at working, but D-ball is uh, not the thing that you think it is. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> that's my... I like how we're about to start talking about bulking and we could talk about food or whatever, training, <laughs> and you're like, let's go to drugs, let's go to D-Bowl, 400 MT a day. That was a freaking amazing story, man. Oh, man. So, I actually really like that you're being honest and like insightful for listeners rather than people just guessing and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I that's how everybody like starts, you know. The, everybody, yeah. everybody thinks about the bulking cycle with D-Bowl. And nowadays, the world has changed to drugs. So... There's no point hiding it. Everybody's taking it. So if I'm just hiding okay, it, I would yes. just be lying. I it's like it's the lying. main priority. It's just like, okay, what drug do I take first? Exactly. So I'll take this one. It's like, okay, how many calories do I need to eat? What should my training cycle be like? And it's just like, yeah. like the, the order of priorities. It's just like, none of that shit matters. It's just, it's just like, let's just push that to the side and let's just focus on which drug I should take. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It reminds me of a, um, there's a bodybuilder called Paul Dillett. You know him? And he's got a story because Lee Priest used to live with him. And one time, like, he was going to his faster cardio. He just couldn't be bothered. So he literally just jabbed himself with T3 and GH. It's like, I should do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> the drug's first approach. So yeah. ugly. So that's the ugly. We're talking that's about ugly. ugly, guys. So Connor, ugly. Nick, ugly. Okay. I want the uglies first. I'll give you an ugly. Oh, shit. Um, oh, I, was to... I was in year 12, I think, at the time. And, you know, I just started to learn about a few things and I was really, really dedicated to training, to be honest, but <laughs> nutrition. Uh, and then I heard a few phrases like I'd be at dinner parties and people would grab a cake and I'd, the phrase, oh, we're bulking, bro. It's all good. And I <laughs> took that way too far to limit. Like Costco's on best friends, like those muffins. <laughs> you know, chocolate muffins from um, yep. Costco, Nick? Mm, mm. Yeah, those ones. The, the freaking like 50 grams of fat and 100 grams of carb pop. The huge four. ones. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, they are good though. They are seriously good. And I got up to about 103 kilos and I've got like way more muscle mass now than I do back then as well. So it's a good 20 plus. Kilos that I Fuck me. 
Fuck me. I was still under you. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. Yeah. Hey, I'm down to ninety six point seven now. Nice, no, that's good, man. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm luckily not still at 103, at least in that shape. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, yeah, so I had to peel it back and... You know what the thing is? When you get really fat, it really makes the cutting harder as well. So I did like... Did you, have, did, you have, did you have thighs that will melt my eyes? <laughs> I barely... St- I only just started training legs around that stage, actually. Uh, Which is weird to think about now because you know me, Nick, and I'm like, if I write a program, it's like legs first, upper body. Yeah, I'll figure out whatever you know. So you had the you had the shakes that will make me quick. <laughs> I did. Now the fries, I'll crush your ass. Um, yeah, and I I cut down. I lost whatever muscle mass I had. I was still had that skinny fat thing. Honestly, my fat cells were always. I was always insulin resistant for the next like year and a half. Like mm. if I'd ever try and be in a slight surplus, it was like very distinct and immediate inflammation, fat, all those things. And I really. So when you're younger, yeah, that's when you have your best potential for growth, right? Um, more fresh, all the stimulus thresholds are really Oh, low. you grew. And I just, I put, no, I put, oh, oh, yeah. oh, you grew. I, I, you I was did. anabolic as hell, but in the fat tissue, unfortunately, <laughs> not, not the muscle tissue. <laughs> yeah, that, I man, I really stuffed up the newbie games. Because when did you realize this was enough? I, you know what? I just had the arbitrary bodybuilding kind of thing where it's like, you know, like, oh, 12 weeks out, 16 weeks out, whatever you <laughs> diet. But like, there's no real thought process. Are you like 5% body fat and you need to drop like one or two? Barely. Or are you like 28, 30% body fat? Like it's still 16 weeks out. It's yeah. stupid. Yeah. And I had no idea how to diet by the way as well. But um, yeah, then like bulking going forward after that. It was ugly in another measure as well because I wouldn't really have the confidence to bulk after that. Like mm. for a little while, because I'm like I was almost traumatized from the fat gain, and, <laughs> and obviously my health was still really poor at the time. But yeah, that's my ugly. How about you, Nick? Fuck, man. Like to be honest, when I've specifically done like bulks, I've actually never had like serious outbreaks, like you motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> but like, like, you guys, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> yeah, I'm like Jesus, fuck, like that's some messed up shit. I, I mean, I've had like unintentional box if that makes sense like yeah, like things just slowly like, slip away you know things, things just slowly slip away and like hips slowly get a little wider and i'm just like <laughs> like yeah, yeah. am i am i am i bulking right and i was like oh like oh the scales say i'm up eight kilos fuck <laughs> like like <laughs> that's what, so unintentional wise like like i've successfully put on weight but i've never gone through i like, even when i started training you know oh, like I've always, I've always been pretty good about it. Not to make too much drastic changes with it. Um, mm. Like when I mean drastic changes, I mean like like huge amounts of weight increase. So if I was seventeen yeah. in high school and that's when I was training a lot, like yeah, I knew I had to eat more. Like th- to be honest, the only thing I remember I did in high school was just like eat a lot more pasta and violet crumbles and like all the just, carbs. Yeah, just just that's like, right, man. Uh, yeah, like and but I was I was real active then, so yeah. To be honest, like it didn't really do much. It wasn't until like really I finished school, and I think activity levels went down because I wasn't outside playing as much. Right mm-hmm. then, I guess I this is where the unintentional bolt came in. So oh yeah, I could probably still like eat like I'm going to gym more now, which I was. Like I was still eating quite a lot. Like I would pig out like any good Greek boy would, pig right? Out. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make your yaya proud. Yeah, like like it was it was it was a sin if I didn't if I didn't eat what was given to me. So, <laughs> so like man, I was coming up with some crazy shit. Like I'll go to my yaya's house and she'd make me like like fresh like didopitas or which is like a feta um, um, pie kind of thing. And um, she'd make me like chicken schnitzels and shit. So I was like, oh, chicken schnitzel, like protein, right? So I used to cut, <laughs> mm. I, I used to cut up the chicken schnitzel that she made. And then I was like, okay, what more protein can I do with this? So I made like this, this is frowned upon by the way, but you like make like a chicken schnitzel omelet. Man, the shit was the bomb. <laughs> like I was like, hang on, I'm mixing an egg it. and a chicken. Delicious, but like, yeah. it was, it was actually so fucking good. I was like- it's two generations of oh, my meal. I Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm onto something. But I think at that point, 
So when I finished school, I was probably around 86 kilos. Then after that, okay, I was clubbing more. I was drinking a lot more. I probably got to like 95, 96. I was fat. Like I had, man, like you, you reckon, like, fuck. Like I had hips that like had like little, little dough pieces hanging on the side of it. You know, like fucking hell. It was like soft shell tacos, but like sitting back there. It was, it was, yeah. So to be honest, this is what I mean. I've never like, when, when I started really getting into training, whenever I've gone through a bulking phase, it's those have been like successful in a way to, to the degree I want, but I've never done something so ridiculous where I'm like, you know, 103 kilos like this motherfucker over here or like this motherfucker having like pimples on his back just because he overdosed on some shit. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> But yeah, man. That's everyone's ugly. Yeah, that's I've, 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 I've just, I just I just eat and I don't exercise and I get fat. I mean, if you want to call that the ugly, we're bulking, like, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're bulking, bro. Yeah, yeah that's I'm my like, thing. Yeah. Bulking, bro. Yeah, yeah. fuck. Oh, so <laughs> I think this it's is about, mostly, it's about it. It mostly I think I to... bulked earlier, man. I bulked when I was like seven, six years old. Like, like, cheersy, go to your <laughs> house. Like, man, I was bulking back then for sure. Yeah, like, I'm bulking, I, bro. <laughs> but I think this is uh, everyone can relate to the fact uh, of wrong or crazy bulking when they're young. Like this is when they never knew about what's going on, what what protein intake, how much, uh, what does it do to your body, carbs. Did you guys come from an athletic background? Question. No, I didn't. Like, yeah, Connor. I like, played a lot of sports you... and stuff like that. But, uh... Yeah. No, as in, what do you mean by athletic background? Like your parents being athletic or stuff like that? No, did but you, when you're raising kids, did you, you play come from sports and stuff. <laughs> oh, I had a like, I had a super active uh, school years year. Like whenever, whenever I was schooling, I was like in the track and field team. Uh, I was playing sports. Yeah, I was playing. I was playing. Um, so when you when you guys when you guys were kids, like like, and obviously you had to you know, perform well for sports. Just obviously we didn't know much about everything we do with nutrition and stuff like that now, but like, you know, what was your, what was your go-to thing? If you're playing soccer, if you're playing basketball, if you're playing footy or something like that, like what's your go-to, you just know, normal thing? food. No, just, no, just no, normal food. No, just your wheat beaks, your cornflakes. Your, yeah. Like no, it, just your, for sure would always be there. Um, whatever mum, mum back for lunch. <laughs> Then mum packed the lunch, yeah. I mean, I was okay. terrible. After school, that was like, that was like a foreshadowing of the 103 kilo bowl. <laughs> I, I'd get home and that was like probably the most quickly dancing of the day. Nutella sandwiches, chocolate milkshakes, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. I, uh, the other, the, actually, the other day, um, it was my brother's birthday and we were like, as a family, we were all in like our video chat and uh, we all got into this thing where, yeah, He's 30. And we got into this thing where mum just started sending like all these photos of us, like from basically from when I was a baby, like fresh as fuck, um, like just over the years. And I'm looking at these photos and I'm like, mum, how come I was the fattest fucking baby out of like, <laughs> the three of us? <laughs> I was like, what did you feed me? Like, look at how huge I am. Like, like, and then like, it's just like a slowly timeline of just, not like yes, I'm getting like bigger. But I'm just getting expanding mm. outwards in a bit of pop belly. Like, oh, uh-huh. like why am I so fat? And Chris goes, man, like I don't know about you, but what you, this is this was your daily routine. He goes for breakfast, you'd have two bowls of cereal, two slices of toast with cheese and butter on it. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> and then like you go, and he goes, they were just normal bowls of cereal, like they were big bowls of cereal. I'm like, okay, okay. all right. And then he goes, and then you'd have your normal shit like you know, your, you know, for uh, recess and lunch and stuff like that. I'm like, okay. He's like, and then you come home and have like another bowl of cereal and then you have, and I was like, fuck. All right. And then he goes, and then you'd have like eat a lot that mum cooked for dinner. And then you would have even more like dessert and stuff like that before bed. And I was like, man, that sounds like I ate more like then than I did now. (laughs) Six meals a day. Yeah. And I I was doing this whole six meals a day. shit Like like, probably like 10 years straight. Like I was like, but man, oh they, my God. They, they weren't they weren't like mini meals too. Like, They're like massive like, meals, mm. massive they're, sweet they're, meals. 
So when you say yeah. bulk, like I, I felt like I lived my whole life a bulk. <laughs> yeah. But like as a baby, I'm like, why am I so fat? Like I, I can get photos up now, man. Man, I was so chunky, like like puffed out cheeks, arms. This is ridiculous. Wow. It just mm. it, yeah. And then it got to when I moved to America, man, shit just got back. <laughs> cereal was cheaper. Cereal was cheaper back then. Walmart was booming. Nick's dad got all the cereals for his kid. Oh, <laughs> mom's like, "Hey, the bowls are bigger over here." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have three bowls a day. <laughs> no, but yeah, the good then. <laughs> the good. Um, what's the best bulk you've had, Bronte? Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, the best bulk I had, I think I have uh, photos that actually, this is actually really good time to bring it up because yesterday Facebook just reminded me, uh, this was two years ago when you guys saw me, uh, when I was uh, just before the, just after the competition, the Victoria Nationals, uh, mm. just after that, oh, I did get a sweet bulk session in there. I was up like two kilos of muscle over three or four months. And I was on the steady gain train. I was like, the the trend train. I was on that. I was on the the trend gain train. Uh, now, what are your dosages at this time? The trend train. You're, you're running trend off season. The, the, no, this was enanthate. So there's two different forms of trend. Uh, trend mm-hmm. acetate and enanthate. Acetate is the ring, which is a, uh, a much smaller benzene ring. That that has a uh, faster release potential and a uh, higher decomposition rate with a very short short li- half life. Um, mm. So for those who are listening, half life is something uh, for which the chemical component lasts in your body or has its own lifetime. That's half life, mm. and that's when the potential punch of the component is. And after that, it disappears. The punch disappears. So you have to either retake it. Um, to get the punch. Uh, but this was two years ago, and uh, this time around, I knew a lot. I knew a lot. I mean, like, I had stuff written down. I was knowledgeable, educated. I took all the precautions because people always say that anabolics, when you're taking it, you're just killing yourself. No, you're not. Uh, correction again, amber alert, anabolics, if taken correctly and in the form of, uh, uh, and under the supervision of a very experienced personnel who knows their own shit. You're safe in safe hands. You know how to control it. And if you learn a lot about it. Um, yeah, fuck trend though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very dangerous, that's a very dangerous uh, drug though. Uh, but a lot of people also, this is also not something which is misused in the industry. A lot of people have misused this drug. This drug is uh, known to, uh, like, this drug has two forms as I just spoke. Uh, the enanthate and the acetate. The enanthate gives you uh, longer gains, harder muscle condition, um, better quality of muscle over a short, longer period of time because the half-life is greater. I think it's uh, three or four days is the half-life. While acetate has a half-life of only one and a half day. So that's why acetate has its names around being used when you're uh, really dieting it down nearer to competition. You look much more harder, leaner. Uh, you get that stone-like shape you know your serratus and your uh, abs are like tight and everything yeah. and that, that's that's uh, that. so once you get on the trend train um you ride uh so um this bulk was really good so as i said i put on two two and a half kilos of muscle only so two and a half kilos of muscle is a lot of muscle over is this when you're in australia yes yeah have this we was, met you at this stage or is this before yeah, yeah, yeah it was after i finished my competition Okay. Is and this when you're working with Josh? Yes, this is when I was working with yeah. Josh. You're eating a fair bit of food then as well. Yeah, the food was Maybe you, really like you, good. you bumped up your food a bit from like what you yeah. did before. Yeah, the food bumped up. Uh, the food was greater quality, uh, mm. better food. Uh, and uh, the training was also different. Uh, progressive yeah, overloading progressive. was uh, something that I was concentrating on. Uh, four weeks, I think eight weeks was a program that would slowly get me that peak uh, eighth week when we talked about this in the last episode as well <clears throat> weight went up um, like the weight carrying capacity went up joints were healthier I was much more healthy I felt very strong from the inside 
you know, you know, like when what you should feel, like naturally, what your mm. body should feel when you're on good stuff. Um, and then I felt very strong. I, my skin felt very good, um, and that was that was the best bulk I've ever had. Uh, I guess I'm still bulking, bro. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> perma bulk, <laughs> <laughs> perma bulk. But I'm not about that life no more. <clears throat> so. I'm still continuing to do, uh, I still continue to do uh, a good maintained diet just to make, make myself stay on the balanced side of life, not like falling, falling over, uh, having massive love handles with love handles of their own. Mm. So it's like an inception of love handles, uh, which you can never control, you know. Uh, waterfall of fats from both sides of my stomach. I don't want to do that no more. <laughs> That's bad. Uh, but yeah, this was the <clears throat> this was a good bulk. Um, it, it it was really good, and I'm forever I'm sitting at that weight, a little bit above uh, from then, right now with all the fat content. That was a lean bulk. So um, this proves that you need to get a person who is experienced uh, with the trainings they have given other people, um, and um, have uh, like a broad broad field of knowledge, like a broad mm. world like knowledge base, you know, so that's very important. Yeah. Moving on. What's your, uh, yeah, Nick, what's a um, really good bulk you've had? Yeah. Nick, come on. Um, oh, good one that I've had. Successful um, one, I guess we should rephrase it maybe. <laughs> not three bowls of cereal. <laughs> yeah, because that's a good bulk fit. It's not at the same time, you know. <laughs> it's good for the soul. I had over, actually, to be honest, that one with when you and I trained together, um, I think it was two years ago, that was very successful. Um, I think so it was like the mid- same time, 2018. Yeah, it was 2018. Yeah, you know? you're being here printed. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just trying. That's when we um, were doing a bit of more high frequency. We put on an inch and a bit on your carbs, yeah. actually. And you yeah. measured that after like two, three <laughs> weeks of not training them as well. So that was big, man. Yeah, that was that was just a very um yeah that was a definitely a very successful bulk. I mean, to be honest, like like. Speaking of, when, when we're actually looking, you know, talking about the good, the bad, the ugly, I think I think one thing we got to mention when it comes to bulking is that like the bad the bad side is is that you you know the 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 visual representation of what what we see in the mirror, you know, yes mm. we know we're putting on muscle, but the before and afters of like a bulk isn't always like the prettiest thing in the world, right? And Not when you're I, as gratifying, yeah, you know. You know yeah. Yeah, no, nowhere near. I mean, but you just got to have that idea in your mind that, okay, like, yes, I'm going through this bulk, but when I go lean out again, mm-hmm. uh, there'll be more muscle, there'll be more muscle definition when I, by the time I get lean. Right. Yeah. So, um, I think at that time, you know, I wasn't really super focused on like, like, like I said, the visual representations of things, but the, the, what I found very successful out of that was just the overall improvements of your health. So Prantik, you mentioned before, as you were building muscle, you know, you're strengthening your bones, your joints, your tissues and, and stuff like that. And the, obviously as, as we age, those type of things deteriorate. Right. So, um, you know, going, going through a bulk phase and, you know, trying to put on as much muscle as we can, right. Just improving your general health is, you know, make it make helps you feel better mm-hmm. right so um that was one of the many aspects that like i enjoyed throughout that stage right and not only that i think i think you know any, any more calories you kind of the good the benefits that you get out of that is you do have a bit more leeway with what you with what you eat um now i don't mean go fucking eat cookies all the damn time but like <laughs> you know but like there, there is a bit more um, you know, Lee, what you don't have to, you don't have to cry every time you have a slice of pizza or, a, you know, you go out for a burger or something like that. Like if you, you know, if there's a time to do these kind of things, you know, it can just help re you know, reset your, you know, your brain, your psychology and just kind of help you just, pro, you know, let's say you've gone and done like a, a cut for ages or something like that. You've been in a lower, cal- lower calorie deficit for a while and you sort of ease your way into a bulk. Like going through something like that really helps, set you up for the next thing that you're doing and kind of just refreshes 
um, your brain and your mindset again. So um, I think, you know, jacking up the calories, obviously, you know, the benefits of that. I think at the time, man, like I, I was, I was fluctuating quite a lot, like around that period. And that was just due to, um, I think just before that, so in 2017, I um, wasn't really tracking um, I wasn't really tracking my food really well. So there's just huge fluctuations in weight. Like I could see myself 94 one day, then go up to 99 a, w- a week later, 97, 94. And I was just like, like, oh yeah. Like if I was 97 one day, I was like, oh, whatever kind of thing. But then when I go through consistent phases of, you know, eating consistently and I was going through that bulking phase, man, like I think the the benefit I had going forwards after that was obviously a healthier you know, more efficient, shall I say, metabolism. And then um, when, when, it, when it came to, you know, gaining or cutting and things like that, like things just flowed, you know, flowed more. Things were not fluctuating as much. So I think people, um, I, I can, not, you know, this is girls, girls too, because I know girls are, some, a lot of girls are afraid to kind of jack their calories up a lot. You know, I think, you, there's there's a lot of health improvements that you can this gain. Makes- um, so many people can gain like so many benefits just from going through you know phases like that. But what it can potentially do, you know, just for the next year, just mm-hmm. by doing so. Um, so yeah, like I've that to be honest, Connor, like going through that phase with you a couple of years ago, like really helped like set up like. I think I had a feeling it was actually 2017. We did that it's like the end of 2017. Mm-hmm. So earlier that year was quite shit, but later that year, everything was really good. And then 2018, man, like I just got super strong that year. Like I'm pretty sure I added like, I went from like a 215 kilo deadlift maybe to like a 255 or something like that. Like I just got stronger, felt better, felt healthier. And, and just, yeah. So like, like, just from just from simply like one, not just one, but like you know one really good phase, and that kept some consistency going um, from there yeah. on. You kind of just ride a momentum. So, um, I think that's yeah, quite common. Like, like you made gains from it, but it was also almost like a paradigm changer as well. Like a little bit. Yeah. Like you're more consistent from then on, and maybe. I think sometimes when people like shredding as well, they'll take training more seriously or whatnot. And then if it's off season, like, oh, I'll get a main lift and go from there or something like that. They take the season like an off season versus a chance to improve, like Nick's saying. Yeah. Some people call yeah. it an improvement season and stuff. But yeah, I saw it. But like, during but, that and he exploded but, in that strength as well. I was, <laughs> I was crazy. It, it, it's, it, this, is, this is what I mean. Like, that's, that's the side of it that you got to look at because massing is not all you know, sunshine and rainbows, you know, like I said, like you're, you're going to honestly miss the chiseled jaw or the, you know, the, the the deaf defined abs and things like that. You're really going to miss those things. And, you know, if you like to take, you know, you know, quality measures and things like that and real, and like, if you're one of those people that like, just like you, you got to find something and like that, that, that will keep you going because if you're a visual person and things aren't really visually looking good and you're going to fall off the bandwagon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like honestly, that's, you know, if you're just going to cut for six weeks, okay, I'm going to, and then, you know, go through a mass gain soon and I only do it for one week and then go cut again. And one way, like you're yeah. just fucking around with things too much and it's really not going to show any benefit. So you really yeah, got to take a tactical, yeah, a really good tactical approach um, and look for other things other than just a visual representation because overall health, like, it's like, oh no, let's neglect that. Like, like, like what the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's to be honest, that's when I talk about success, like in, in, in that regard, like I, I think of the mass successful mass gains I've had has really set me up, um, for what, what came, what came after that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's awesome. I think maybe we can touch on this as well. It's kind of our strip, script, by the way, guys. But um, you talk about the psychological factors of bulking and how that can be quite hard. Have you got any experiences with that prior to? Like, you know, you know it's probably the best way of gaining muscle mass. Like main, maintaining main gain doesn't really go as well as dedicated caloric surplus. But like Nick's saying, you struggle with that, not having the chiseled face. You struggle with seeing the ab lines goes. 
How have you went with that? Has that held you back? Is that anything like that for you? Or are you always quite like, okay, I understand um, what we're doing now? So Babkin, um, when I was doing it correctly, I knew what I was doing it for. Because um, yeah. I have a, I had the definite purpose of it. I knew I was gaining muscle. I knew I was putting on mass. Uh, so I really didn't have a psychological uh, negative side holding me back. I always took it positively because I was looking in the mirror and um, I always used to think that, okay, this is an additional new muscle mass or uh, better, better shape or better size. I was looking at the uh, roundness of the muscle bellies uh, when mm. I was lo- looking at that. So that's a better way of looking at it. So if you know how to yeah. flex correctly, uh, then you can really see the gains. Um, so I was flexing correctly and very often in front of the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but actually, cool yeah. it actually motivated me. Malk actually motivated me. I never missed that um, chisel face physique of mine, um, especially because I knew, because that was pain. Um, like that, that was actually pain when we go down to that. Uh, it might look very attractive and sexy and women might just come up and say, give me your seed. Uh, take me and other stuff like that. It really doesn't happen. Happen though. Uh, but what really is that you, your skin may become paper thin. You might have six pack abs showing and stuff. But retaining that is very hard. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like it's very hard mm-hmm. and unhealthy. Uh, if you're doing yeah. that lower body fat percentage for a long amount of time, you shouldn't be doing that um, because the body's. I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The body's natural tendency. Uh, like a natural human being, the way we were built, it was to at least have 10 to 12 percent fat um, in the body, retain it all year round, and that's how I think the body was made. Am I correct with that? Are you it's definitely a brown or, or no, I'm just speaking else? about like uh, normal uh, Homo sapiens males. Let's take males. girls are normal too, Prante. Yeah, I, I mean, like about to say. <laughs> normal homo, homo sapien males, and then we can do say yeah. females as well. You just bump up the numbers, the same principle. Yeah. Females carry a little bit more fat because they have other yeah. fat adipose tissues in different places, and usually uh, way less as well. It's yeah, baptism as well. So, um, males would yeah, be that range too low, you can struggle. So, there's like a range, and I guess, um, are you more of like an eight percent? Like, well. Okay, what people see as 8% and what is a true 8% is usually a bit of a disconnect. So I've got to call myself out there. There's a wide-ish range and it kind of depends on a bunch of factors. So on the two lean side of things, I think one of the main parts you really start to see issues with is all things related to particular stress, but also um, reproductive side of things. Mm-hmm. Like that's guys and girls. You, if you're going okay there, there's a good chance you're not in too much of a shit zone. But then again, not being in a shit zone isn't um, doesn't necessarily mean you're doing a great bulk because like hanging out at ten might be different to you having caloric surplus. Yeah, gaining a little bit of fat over time, but it's better than not just maintaining that ten percent, not having gained the size that you otherwise could have as well. Mm-hmm. So what you can do versus what's optimal is definitely a bit of disconnect there as well. Mm. Mm. Mm, that that was very nicely said, Connor. It's very <laughs> educational. Make a clip. Uh, but yeah, um, that's how that's how uh, I bulk, uh, and that's how I looked at bulking um, from the positive. Have positive. you have you changed Have you changed the way you trained when you bulk? I did actually. Um, I, as I as I told uh, told you guys, it was po- progressive overloading, and uh, with progressive overloading, you see every week you're actually making a new PR, um, and you're beating your last weight. Oh wow! Well, um, yeah. And that also has something to do with what Connor just mentioned, like a mental uh, readiness, uh, a psychological positivity. You need to have that positivity to do that. Actually, your body might be in heavy, ca- but you need in comparison that. to in comparison to when you cut, like or, what do you not progressively overload or? Yeah, it's the same. It's the same concept, Nick. But the thing is, uh, when you're cutting, it's 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 much more. It's harder to move that weight. It's harder, as in your body is resisting it. Your body doesn't want to do it. But in bulking, it's easier. It's like going downhill on a bicycle uh, where you're pedaling. So bulking is when you're really really pedaling as well. So that makes mm. it easier. Um, but uh, during cutting, you're just going downhill. 
uh, you're not pedaling anymore. Uh, but you don't want to go downhill at the same time. Um, that's if you know what that feeling. Uh, if I, I don't know if I explained it correctly, but I feel that that's what the feeling is when you're when you're cutting down, but you're still progressively overloading. Your body doesn't want it, but you mentally are ready for it and you physically are prepared for it. But your body doesn't want it no more. Your body is like, no, don't lift that weight. But you're lifting it because I, of the purpose of it. I think the real question that we should ask is that should we change the way we train if we're bulking? Or, you know, yeah. I, I feel, sorry, sorry. I feel like <laughs> uh, it is important to change the way uh, we train when you're bulking because so that just in order to use the um, advantage that you're getting, the extra water retention, um, the extra protection around your joints, cartilage, uh, the extra support, the extra mental, I would say the in the extra mental boost, the, the betterness that you feel in your head should be utilized to the positive side. And that, that's mm. what should help you uh, plow through your way of gains. Ha- have, you ever, have you ever heard the phrase of, um, you know, some, there's some experts out there that believe that when you're cutting, you should you, you you can you pretty much should train as if you were trying to put on muscle. Mm-hmm. You get, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, uh, I mean, you look look from the perspective of the training schedule, uh, training regime. Progressive overloading is all about that. You're training to as if you're putting on muscle mass, right? Uh, you're trying to gain lift more weights. Um, my thoughts still remain the same. Uh, it's just another way of putting progressive overloading. It's just another way of, another term of uh, mentioning progressive. You're mentioning the same thing, progressive overloading, but in a different style, uh, as if you're training for muscle, gaining muscle mass. You're doing the same, but uh, where your body doesn't want it, but you are physically, you have that strength or you feel that good. I mean, the, you look, the difference is when you're bulking, uh, you actually feel good every day. You feel good every day, mm-hmm. all bullshit aside. But when you're leaning and when you're doing the same uh, uh, lifting regime, you don't feel good every day. There might be days when you're down because that's when you, you will get that, um, uh, how, do you, how do you call it? That psychological mood shift or you'll get those uh, hormonal imbalancing going on because your food is either uh, unbalanced amount of carbs, very low, low carbs, uh, high fat, um, low fat, low carb, uh, high protein that kind of diet. Those kind of things that you switch around when you actually are go- dialing it in for a competition or any kind of uh, uh, activity or any kind of game day that you're going for. Um, that's the difference that I face. Uh, I face. That's the difference I face between training when I was bulking and even though the training remains same, the mentality um, was everything that did with it. Bulking mentality was totally mm. different. I was like picking fresh flowers every day. Uh, cutting the flowers are not so fresh. I didn't want to pick it. <laughs> <I did>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's how it is. I might challenge you one step further. Connor, feel free to step in whenever you want. Um, okay, so... Um, so we're looking at we're looking at massing, and obviously you, you like to train differently. Everything's about when you when you're talking about progressive overload, you're obviously talking strictly weights, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now with 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 cutting, again, I know this. To- I know we're talking about um, massing specifically, mm-hmm. but um, I'm actually like um, I'm curious to know that what your thoughts are when you look at it from this perspective. So you're talking about when you're cutting and leaning out. You know, you're talking about all these different recovery adaptations that we that we need while um, while training, right? Like mm-hmm. well, from from training. Okay. Remember a couple of podcasts ago, we spoke about SRA curves, right? Mm-hmm. So stimulus recovery adapt, um, adaptations, right? If you're not causing any kind of stimulus, shall I say, what are you then recovering from? Are we just talking about everyday life? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just getting, I'm just curious to know. So if, if, if training then while well, you're cutting is like, okay, all right. Like if it's going to be somewhat drastically different from bulking, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to really add volume to my, my, my work or, you know, like, or maybe let's just, let's just talk 
you know, I'm, I'm training for a particular stimulus. If I'm not hitting that stimulus, what am I then recovering? Mm-hmm. Right? See, if you're the, kind of just taking a back pedal. This, this one, uh, uh, you, you got a very nice point. Like if you're not really activating or you're not really giving stimulus to the bo- uh, body part you're training, then how are you even recovering? That's a very nice question. It's not how uh, are you recovering, it's what are you then recovering? What are you then recovering? Yeah, sorry. If you're not damaging the muscle, then what are you recovering? Uh, let's put it that way. So uh, now you have to realize that two things. One is uh, a, a cutting sh- a cutting regime comes uh, after a bulking regime. Um, in a perfect world, I'm not talking about our world. I'm talking in a perfect world. In a person, in a perfect situation, uh, a cutting regime will definitely come followed by uh, maybe six months of bulking, January to June. January, February, March, April, May, June. Yeah, Jan to June of uh, nice, solid, healthy bulking, followed by the June to December of cutting, or June to November of cutting, you know. So uh, if you look at it in that way, you see progressive overloading. You're doing those six months of uh, progressive overloading followed by a deload phase, progressive overloading, deload phase, probably two progressive overloading phases in that, perfect ones, and then two deload phases. And by that time, by the time, if, if you realize that, if you, if, you, if you do the calculations in your head, by the time it's July, you're already at a, at a, at a strength level uh, of moving weights, which you were not at beginning of January. Did I, did I get that correct? Uh, so suppose you, so- you, your max was something in January, but your max has substantially increased by July. So when you're going through a cutting phase, you're a, like if you compare that to a year prior, your ability to train has gone in up. a perfect in, in a perfect world has mm. gone up. Right? Yeah. But but let's just say, you know, um, we've talked about maximal recoverable volume, right? And yeah, so your ability to train has you know gone up. But we've spoken about maximal recoverable volume before and and but you know sometimes these numbers these numbers can change you know what you what may have been your mrv in one phase could mm-hmm. be potentially lower right and then let's just say in this world um you know because you're because you're going through a cutting phase okay less energy or something like that maybe in during this phase your mrv ranges are you know a bit lower but your ability to train heavier and harder is is a lot different um, to the year before mm-hmm. now you can still in, 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 in some aspects when you can kind of comparing, okay, last year and this year, right. You can still in some regard, like make improvements, right. You can still hit new stimuluses, right. While going through this phase. Otherwise, like I said, if there's, if we're, if we're not training and hitting a stimulus, Right. If there's if there's no stimulus, it's basically mm-hmm. just wasted energy expenditure, mm-hmm. right? Which we're, we're just kind of wait, what, like wasting. Right? Like, what are we even doing? It's just like, well, if we're not going to train, well, what the fuck's the point? Like, what's if we're going to just focus on recovery, right? Because we're eating less and we're just training for the sake of training, just to get a good pump. But what's you know, you you you're kind of coming like some, not just you. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that probably just come from the angle. Well, what's you know. Like if I'm not going to train to make any kind of stimulus, I may as well just not 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 train at all. Just fuck it. Like let's just eat and diet till the show. True kind of thing, right? Um, yeah. So, so do you think? Do you okay? So that's going from a cutting, you know, cutting perspective. So um, now, although these these um, variables might be different. Like when I say MRV and maybe when you're going through, you know, in a perfect world, um, going through a massing phase, your MRV, okay, is a lot higher. I've got more energy. I can, you know, just all, all everything's going up, right? Should it be different? Mm. Is this in Connor, a perfect- feel free to jump in. Yeah, Connor. Yeah, I'll jump in. So do me a tackle off season or free contest. I've been... Off season, a pre contest phase followed by off season. You know, I'll, maybe I'll just summarize this quickly. Um, I think we're going to understand the principle is always the same, but the circumstances are changing. So you still got your different stimulus thresholds and you've got different ones to um, grow and you've got different ones to maintain, which might 
be something you'd look into as part of the question of why should we train at all when we're pre-contest. But so I'm going to talk about bulking, and then you can almost guess that everything that doesn't apply bulking is almost inversely related because there's different circumstances related to food. Okay, the opposite if you're in deficit. Um, so when you're trying to grow, you're in an interesting circumstance because there's more anabolic machinery, if you will, um, being catered towards growing via things outside of training. Like imagine you need multiple things to come to the party to grow. You need like mm-hmm. training, you need like you know, recovery, sleep kind of thing, but you, and you need food. Imagine to a degree, if you keep two out of three of those high, you'll have a good response. Well, if you look at pre-contest, you know, if you're training good, but there's no food there and you're sleeping poor, you, you haven't met that two out of three, you're going to struggle. So without the food, you need to be really precise with your training because you need to hit that two out of three. Off season, you kind of got more room because re- recovery on the whole is better, you know, granted, you know, a few things. Um, and food is obviously higher that helps recovery in itself and just straight up anabolic um, pathways. So with training, you can almost get away with less to a degree. Like the growth threshold is lower. The maintenance threshold is definitely lower. <laughs> um, but you can also train more as well. So almost like the gap and range of how you can train is more. Am I saying that's, you know, men you should be, you know, oh, whatever, I'm so, I've got a really wide bullseye, should I be throwing my eyes closed? No, because if you do, one of the advantages, advantages is of off-season is imagine you can progress through a wider range. Well, mm-hmm. it means exactly that. You can progress for a longer period of time just because you can throw a bullseye, you know, anywhere in the range and work for a little bit to maximally not get the best results, you know, month one, month two, but also month three, four, five, six, you'd have ways of progressing. And now there's a higher and better progression model that you can take advantage of. So the model's the same, but the range is bigger. So I think mm-hmm. that's one of the big things off season. It like, yeah, frees up choice, but, you know, I think most people are all about like maximum adaptations. It allows you to make potentially, if you get things really right, maximum adaptations for longer. And I think the for longer part is key, you know, before you're like limited by all these other things. That's, that's nicely placed. That's nicely placed. Uh, the, the, the answer that I, I think Nick was looking, Nick, you are looking for, um, from my training perspective, I would like to say uh, that, that, that that concept of six months of gaining and then six months of leaning out. I wanted to say that those six months of gains when you were gaining and when you're hitting that P, the PPR every day, uh, the, the, the weight that you started with in January has substantially increased by the time you reach July. And it keeps increasing. Uh, so that riding that bicycle downhill uh, is, is actually a valid example uh, because by the time you're, you're cutting down, you already have so much strength on the wings uh, from all the bulking that you've done that it's literally easy to lift, uh, lift the weight that you're already used to and then progress a little bit further. So even when you're cutting, you're actually progressing. Now, this is what I'm talking about when you're perfectly doing everything good, when you're professionally doing it. Professionally doing it, uh, I mean, you're doing it, you're biting it down to the bone and you're... Uh, you have done all your bulking phases correctly. Uh, every week of progressive overloading has been utilized and you've gone up in weight. Uh, that's what I mean by uh, perfecting. Somebody has background noises. Because <laughs> I think at the, at, the, at the end of the day, the goal, the goal of any kind of cut phase, it's not just to lose body fat. It's also to maintain as much as the shit that you just slapped onto your body. All right? And you know, to do that obviously requires, you know, a degree of, you know, that those degrees of, you know, adaptation is to be made. Mm -hmm. Right. So now when, now when I do say that, like, like it doesn't just mean when when we talk about any kind of form of progressive overload or, you know, reaching a new stimulus or anything like that, it doesn't mean fucking going like 300% you know, you know, just fucking dying after, you know, huh. the end of every sessions and shit like that. It doesn't, necess- it doesn't re- it doesn't mean that, yeah. right. It's, it's, you know, like, I think, you know, I, I get what you're, you're coming from in the sense of, okay, you know, while I'm cutting, obviously I'm in less calories. There's really only so much weight I can add 
to the bar, to the dumbbells and things like that before things start to slow down. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's where, you know, you got to, obviously when you have a good trainer, you know, they, they start to look at, you know, other variables that can actually help, you know, increase, you know, again, your ability to train, you know, more, more efficiently, harder, you know, and again, hit those stimuluses and reach those adaptations that we want. So, um, like, yeah, so no, that, that was, that was, I, um, I was just, I was just intrigued, you know, you know, your thoughts and just comparisons on the two. Um, moving on, um, I'd like to actually now talk about, um, how much of a surplus do we like? Right. So, um, when we're going in a calorie surplus, like what, do, do we just free bowl it? Do we, is, is there like a range we like to stick to or, you know, is there an exact amount that, that we like to stick to? Is it more that we look at things based on a rate of weight gain um, over the course um, of the week or, you know, how, how do we, how do we like to do, do you guys have like a on day off day, you know, kind of thing during a surplus, like on your on days, I'd, I'd like to just eat as much as I can on my off days, eat, a little less, but over the to- total week, I still want to hit this amount of calories kind of thing. How, how, starting with you, Connor, Frantic's talked a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you like to structure yours? Mm-hmm. I'd love okay. to do On the on day, off day, <laughs> on the on day, off day thing, I'm going to give a shameless plug. Prantik can edit in the video we've done on that. That was a good decisive one on that. It goes for like eight minutes or so. Um, as for rate of weight gain, and like you're talking about what metrics you can use, I think you've literally got to use all of them and understand they have different weight at potentially different times. So obviously, it's, you know, we're usually talking about, you know, I guess bodybuilding in the back of our mind we've been talking about today, but also applies for performance sports. It's very handy to know what the composition of people look like. So you can have a metric that gauges muscle and a metric that gauges fat. And you know if the metric that gauges fat that's going up and the one that gains muscle isn't, you're pretty sure you're gaining fat and vice versa. Yeah. And so that's when you know you can change things or not. And that will tell you whether, okay, should I be on a more aggressive um, side of things in terms of my rate gain or not? Because I'd love to see it say it's like, okay, here's the answer. But again, it's principle-based so that the numbers can change. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, I like to have people gain, not necessarily in the initial stages, but over time slower than they would cut so you'd expect people to cut at a higher rate of weight loss and you'd see people gain at a higher rate of weight gain that's because it's easier to lose fat than it is to gain muscle so we need to kind of match mm. those numbers um as to how much food to have i think the best thing is you find someone's calories uh, maintenance calories you know just through t- trial and error a few equations and whatnot and you add a little bit on top and you see what happens and you line up with your training all the good things and you go from there because sometimes for certain people, the number won't be ultra high, you know. And I've had other people where it's like, you remember Big Nick, the basketball player? The Big Nick basketball player. No idea. He was like six foot 11. <laughs> I can show you. I can make him. I can send oh, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your, your, your client. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He, um, man, we had him at like 5,000 calories a day. And the first week he like mm. dropped weight. I was like, okay, we need to ramp things up. And I've had the same for another guy called Adam Rochester and stuff. But there's been other people where it's like, okay, yeah, you're gaining, but it's not quality. And then other people it's like, okay, it might not seem like that much food, but it's the right amount for you. And we're just going to go to a slower rate of weight gain because also you've got to match with their training. If they're not able to train as hard and as intense, then it's pretty fair to say that you can't expect as much muscle mass to accrue. So you kind of match that with your weight gain ratios. Because if you like blanket statement on make people gain half a kilo a week and someone had a hundred gram of muscle get, gaining stimulus, another person had a 400 gram of muscle gaining stimulus, then you're going to have completely different responses, even though they both got 500 grams or whatever of muscle gaining, gaining stimulus. I think I fucked up there. You got, yeah, same muscle weight gain, gain, but different yeah ratios. Yeah, that's the one. So I think honestly it's best to like track things and I think physique related in terms of photos aren't as handy as they are pre contest because you don't really see as much changes. Performance in your lifts, that's big. I think that's quite big. There's certain ones that'll be hard to tell, like just in the same way strength can go down with like bench press, for example, if you're losing weight because 
regardless of calories and stuff, you've got more range of motion because you're losing fat off your chest and your back. So the bias technically got to go further than it otherwise would if you're heavy and stuff like that. So you're matching those factors and you see if performance going up in the relative rep ranges and specific to muscle building exercises. So I think that's the way you go about it for the most part. So as for rate, I'll just give a general range maybe. As you first start, you obviously fill out and you like load up stores. So that's naturally a bit quicker. But once we're through there, um, it depends how long the off season. I, I want to give a blanket answer that if you go like a long time, you can spread it out more. Maybe a kilo a month, something like that. That's a lot, yeah. actually. Are you talking about only muscle mass, though? No. Yeah, that's I wish. fat and mass. Yeah, yeah but that's yeah. the best way to go. Because if you're just trying to just gain exclusively muscle, what, okay, I'll rephrase it like that. If you're trying to say, okay, I won't gain any fat, you probably won't gain much to any muscle at all. <laughs> Especially if you compare it to like the other person that does gain more muscle and fat. They strip you'd off the joking. fat, they maintain the muscle, and they're in a better position than the person that was just otherwise maintaining. So I think there's good value there. It always comes with fat. I mean, like uh, gain a gain phase always comes with fat. And if you don't have fat, you're doing it the wrong way. If you think think like you're leaning out, you're going to be lean and mean, and you're going to gain weight, <clears throat> gain uh, only pounds and if pounds. You, if you're not gaining fat muscle. and you're putting on muscle, tell us your secret because we'd really like to know. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. real answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going for. I mean, like <laughs> give it to me. I think whatever, I've punched my mention it before. Yeah, it was like Tran, 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 oh. <laughs> Bren, something like that. You know. <laughs> Are you talking about Tren the Tran Train? I've Tren seen sandwiches. Yeah, I, I've I've seen people go on it and then never return. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? For uh, it's a good point actually, because we maybe should mention to our like more. You know, I'm thinking natural athletes when I say some of those numbers. If you are using some of these other things and you've got like, yeah, the Deca weight and other water retentive compounds, it's going to screw up these numbers completely. And also your rate of weight, you know, gain that you can actually achieve is a little bit higher. So I'd actually move it a little bit more aggressively as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with all these uh, pharmaceutical help uh, that, uh, that you get, um, I feel like you, you, you should be um, careful about what you're using because uh, these are things which are getting better with the time, with the, which are getting better with time. Uh, these are lab manufactured uh, pharmaceuticals and they get, they're only going to get better with time. Like the effects are going to be like stronger, and stronger and stronger and stronger. Whatever we had 10 years ago is not the same this, uh, now. Uh, new things are coming out and uh, better tests are being done. I, I don't know. Things are going to get freaky in the future as well. Uh, but we should be really careful about, we should have the, like the, the basic and the clear concept should be once you, there is no shortcut to gaining muscle and you cannot gain muscle without gaining fat. Uh, these are the two rules, the, the golden rules that people should follow and keep in their mind. They shouldn't just uh, go for stuff like, oh, I'm, I'm gaining. I'm we are bulking, bro. Don't, don't, don't worry about what we're eating and what we're not. You should worry about what you're eating and what you're not because what you're eating now predominantly judges what you're going to look after, look like after. Uh, if you're just eating three humongous uh, bowls of uh, uh, cereal, you're in for a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, right, Nick? Am I right? I don't know, man. I got some pretty sick results back then. <laughs> My cornflake game and rice bubble game was on point. <laughs> yeah, so uh, as Connor mentioned, it's, it's very important to gain that fat because that fat is what uh, helps you uh, in the future to gain more muscle mass. Uh, I, I would say, Nick, if in terms of number, I would say gaining uh, 500 grams of muscle over a term of 9 to 10 months is a very nice, uh, is a very nice amount. That's about uh, one chicken breast being added onto your body as muscle, like sheer muscle mass. Oh, I, mean, I, I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Something very hard to imagine. It's like if you're looking at the human skeletal system, a human muscular system, then the red colored muscle strands are the ones that I'm talking about. Five hundred grams of those strands being added to your body is a lot. Like a lot. Hmm. I know what it, it feels. I know what, what, what I'm talking about. Um, 
I want the I want the listeners just to visualize. Uh, obviously, Nick and Connor know has a clear picture of this one as well. Uh, but those who are listening, I want them to visualize that skeletal that 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 red man that you saw in your biology books with muscle all over his body. <laughs> Adding on that 500 grams. Now imagine a chicken breast beside him, uh, which is uh, which which weighs equal to 500 grams, and that adding on that chicken breast, uniformly all over his body in different muscle parts that he trains. That's a lot of lot amount of flesh to be added on. Um, but then you obviously gain a kilo or two or five of fat as well. So uh, fat can go away, but this muscle will never uh, go away. It'll retain. So once your biceps better not become bigger, bigger, <laughs> then they stay big. And unless you're doing something wrong, you're doing something like you're severely depleting yourself of food um, mm. or you're in a place. Uh, become a marathon runner. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Become a marathon. It's nicely put. That's what I was searching for. Uh, a highly, <laughs> highly physically demanding sport. That's what I would say. Mm. A sport that demands you to be lean. Not only a marathon runner, uh, it can be, uh, you can be a bobsleigh person. You can be a person riding on the bobsleigh because that's when you need body. body. Yeah. You can be a F1 driver because they need leaner people to drive F1 cars for drag uh, acceleration. Uh, if you're also riding MotoGP, stuff like that. These different forms of sport demand different body. But if you're previous in some other sport and then you're switching over um, to a much more uh, high uh, physically demanding sport, then you will be lo- losing muscle. Get ready to do that. So, yeah. Mm. Um, for example, I was thinking of training for an American Ninja Warrior. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of joining a gym later this year. So, I'm mentally getting ready to lose a lot of muscle mass. Um, and uh, Some of them are pretty sizable. Gym- yeah, like I think it's still beneficial to have your muscle. Uh, there, you you need you to keep you need to keep in mind that I need to do that five foot wall climb, and a person with my height doing that five or six feet wall climb, I need a lot of less weight to carry. <laughs> so um, I'm I'm actually getting mentally ready to actually let go of all this muscle, and then become mm. lean mean. Uh, what was that? Who was that guy in the mechanic? <laughs> Uh, Henry Cavill? Oh. No, was it Henry Cavill? No, he's not the mechanic. Um, I'm going to forget. I'll uh, wake up at night. DiCaprio? No, not DiCaprio. I forgot his mechanic. name. The mechanic. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've... Ah, we know him so um, well. Come on, Nick. It is um, Jason Statham. Uh, no. No. Mm. Jason Statham, yeah. Ah, yeah, Jason Statham. Yeah. He was he was in Crank. If you see his body body form in Crank, uh, Crank Volume Two, Three, Death Race. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it changes. Um, so that, that that's how that, that's how, um, like, yeah, yeah. I guess that's it. <laughs> for for me, um, I was just gonna uh, I touch on couple other things i mean yeah, sure i think i think um one important note to make sure um for a lot of people when you go through a calorie surplus is um well the, what's, one of the benefits of having more food is more more energy right mm-hmm. um and a lot you know you know the concept um misconception people have oh you know like like i was eating you know x amount of calories i wasn't really losing weight but now i'm eating like 600 calories more and now, now I'm losing weight. Like it's the fact that I'm eating more calories means I'm losing weight now. Um, but really they're just kind of moving a lot more. So, um, you know, their neat levels, for example, are, are higher, you know, their energy levels are higher. Their training sessions are more efficient, you know? So the fact that they ate more food gave them the ability, you know, to, to perform better and live life better. Um, so when I've, when I've gone through a calorie surplus, when I'm working about, you know, how much, right. There's obviously that amount that's like, it, it, it it's a chore. Right. And, um, you know, for a lot of us, it, it, it feels like that most of the time, like, fuck, like, like trying to get 4,000 calories on or something like that. It is just an absolute nightmare <laughs> to try and do. 
right? To do like every single day. For some people, 5,000. Think of the strong men out there. It's like 10, mm-hmm. 12,000 calories a day. You know, for, that's a lot uh, of calories. Exactly. Yeah. And for some of these guys, you know, like, like, there's only so much healthy food that you can eat and eventually mm-hmm. you're just going to have to get it from elsewhere. Right. Um, so yeah, definitely got some thoughts there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts, Connor? <laughs> I've been okay. So I think one of the things maybe because we we're potentially going to talk about obstacles and this wasn't my first thing to talk about, but for some of the bigger guys out there, people just really struggling with appetite. Maybe this would be handy. Mm. I think there's a stage where you want to cover your micronutrient base. So you want to make sure you're not deficient in anything. Mm-hmm. But other than that, what do you look at as good, clean foods versus otherwise? It doesn't really matter too much because you're probably going to hit your thresholds of protein, carbs, fats anyway. You're trying to figure out which way can I eat more calories, especially if that's what you're struggling with. So some things that can help with like, you know, um, optimizing the hunger to calorie ratio you can get in is, again, not going overboard in fiber. You know, <laughs> it's probably the time to try and get all your carbs in via broccoli. You just don't have to eat too much. Mm-hmm. So on the other mm-hmm. side of the spectrum, what is really dense in, in carbohydrates or other calories, you know, like an oil or a maple syrup, as you know, Nick, um, that, <laughs> Mom cracked you look it. into those things. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you're looking for things that are going to digest you efficiently as well. So what can move through your digest um, system quickly and get you hungry soon? If you have like, you know, classic example of oats, I, I can eat oats all day. Maybe that's a bad example, but people talk about it, you know, they feel quite, you know, bogged down and slow digesting carb, blah, blah, blah afterwards. So you're looking for like mm-hmm. things that maybe you have a base part of your meal. And then what I've done with a lot of people it might be like beef, rice, whatever. And then from there you add an equal amount of carbohydrate source via syrups, drinks, usually white rice people digest pretty well as, as well. Mm-hmm. So anyway, point being, if you are at the stage where it's so hard to get in those foods, like those strong men or just your average person that's really struggling to get food down, a, you know, make sure you're eating the right amount of food and all the rest. But then from there, forget this love affair with it's got to be chicken breast, it's got to be this, it's got to be that. I mean, if you want to reach a goal, you should be loyal to whatever's going to help you reach that goal. Mm-hmm. So I think high digestion and taking care of your digestive system is really important for a good off season. Mm-hmm. I agree. Do you have a struggle with that? Um, You've always been a pretty hungry lad, so probably doesn't. <laughs> I don't know if it's biggest yeah. as much, but have you ever struggled to put down food? Nah, <laughs> I've never. <laughs> nah, like, like I always find. I think, I think I sh- the only thing I'll struggle like if I know I've got to get food in. I think it's just a lack of, like at the moment, for example, like going to the supermarket is not exactly the easiest thing to do in the world. So sometimes it's just a like lack of convenient food. Mm. You know what I mean? Just like at a convenience. Like, of what, food. Yeah, like like in the house. Like if I if I know that I've got to get two hundred grams more carbs in, I was like, fuck. If I just had like a handful of dates in my hand, I, I'm sweet, you know. But like, you know, like, um. But mum really wants that maple syrup for breakfast, so I can't really have that. You know? <laughs> like, um. But you know, no, I've never really, I've never really struggled, um, putting down, um, food. That's always been quite the um you know, quite the, quite the easy part for me. Um, but like, my ba- food, ba- he means, my food, he means like food, like boiled chicken. Oh, not even just that, just like, you know, you're just really struggling to get calories in by whatever. No, what if, I put, with- what if I put in like boiled chicken and broccoli? For two- I think that'd be a bad choice. Yeah. Right. But that's, that's choice, the best yeah. form of chicken that you can ever have. Yes. But if I you're trying think to it's consume- worth it if you can't get it in. If you if you're trying to consume five that eight thousand calories a day, of let's that, say, yeah, for example, that's madness. Okay. You're gonna yeah. have that. There's a there's a lot of chicken that you're gonna have to consume. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna <laughs> die consuming that. Um, oh my god, it sounds like hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sleeping with chicken. Um, I mean, I, like back to what I was saying before. So, like I said, sometimes you know, if you if you are at a let's say your hung, hunger level hunger levels are good. Um, you're in a good surplus. Um, and let's say, let's say you're eating, um, more. And to be honest, I, I, I kind of look at this on both ends, you know, if you're bulking or if you're in an extreme cut, um, like I said, um, for me in particular, I notice I think, you know, I'm, I'm just more, more active, you know? So sometimes when I think I'm in a surplus, to be honest, I'm, I'm like, 
I'm actually like maintaining or even slightly yeah. dropping. Um, and, you know, that's where I sometimes think, hang on. Like I, I was about to, I was about to maybe let's like, oh, fuck it. Like, oh, maybe go for a walk today or maybe do an extra gym session just for the sake of fucking doing it. But like, you know, I think, I think it, you gotta, you gotta tell yourself when, 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 like if having more food is, is going to be that much harder for you. Sometimes sitting at home, watching a movie, you know, and just maybe chilling just for a little bit is probably the better, it could be the better mm. option. You know what I mean? Anabolic. And yeah. And, and to be honest, the anabolic couch, you know, in this scenario, <laughs> anabolic, you know, couch. Like, <laughs> anabolic couch is great. There's our snippet for the episode. <laughs> As, as long as you're ticking off all the other things, right? It could, could be the, you know, the beneficial thing, you know, mm-hmm. in this scenario, you know, and because what, you know, you can also talk about that, you know, how stress levels can go down just by like chilling out and things like that. Like just having a life outside yeah. of dieting and training and things like that. That's, that's, it's a really good, you know, um, aspect point. to look at it from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I think what Connor said, you know, if there, if there are points, you know, or if you, you're really struggling to put, put down food, you know, definitely take some of those tips. I know for me in particular, um, you know, if there's, if, if, if I'm looking at something and it's just too hard for me to maintain, sometimes lowering the activity um, levels I've, and knowing that I can actually maintain that because I'm, I'm quite a chill out person, but you know, mm-hmm. when we go back to work and things like that, and, you know, I'm on my feet all day as a personal trainer and things like that. I know activity levels are going to be a lot higher. So when it comes to time, like that downtime winding down, it's, I, 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 I treat that as if it was a training session, you know, you utilize it, wind down, chill the fuck out, you know? So don't just, don't just add more and more and more on top of what you're doing because, mm-hmm. you know, if you're consistent at adding more and more and more and more, right. And your objective yeah, it's just going to make it a bit more difficult. Um, but I guess that depends on, it all depends on the individual as well. So for me in particular, I personally like that. Um, and um, over the course of phases, I mean, uh, I, we haven't really touched on this in particular, but I'm, I'm sure you guys have very, very similar answers. You know, I try not, like I make adjustments, but... I try not, I, I'm very patient with it. Um, so for example, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to aim to increase my weight by, you know, uh, what do you call it? 400 grams or, or a week or something like that, 300 grams. But then one week, you know, I've just all of a sudden upped it by 800 grams, probably not like going to adjust my calories just because of this one week, mm-hmm. right? Maybe, maybe I'll continue doing what I'm doing for the following week. And then again, if I've upped myself 800 grams a little faster, okay, all right, maybe I should make some form of adjustments, right? So I'm very patient um, when it comes, when it comes to those things, but I don't know if you guys are the same. Do you guys kind of operate? Yeah. Dude, there's less changes you make definitely off season as well, even pre contest or like, people cutting people can get frustrated at like me yeah. not making a change like mm-hmm. occasionally people will like not lose weight for a week and my guidelines will be like okay just do another yeah. week because you really yeah. want to make sure because there's so many variables you're playing around with and if you're not sure that and it's a protocol that's holding you back then you're just taking a stab in the dark it might hurt exactly. you later on mm. so when we're talking about obstacles i think like in general with these type of things be patient you know, and I know one of the yeah, biggest, you know, as a, as a, as a, um, you know, Prantik, you can even go as a, as a you know, dieting for a show and stuff like that. Someone telling you to be patient, you just want to punch them in the face, right? It's just like, what the fuck did you say? No, go hard, bro. Um, you know, <laughs> so like there's so many obstacles, obstacles that come in the way, but mm-hmm. I know you and I've seen you through contest prep and, you know, different phases of bulking, cutting and things like that. Like, you're quite, you're just a calm person. You're, you're, you're quite patient. You understand, yeah. you know, the game and stuff like that. But like, if the, actually, to be honest, is, do you have any other words of advice, you know, for people um, when it comes to those obstacles and how to get, you know, how to get through it? So for me, I say, be, be patient, 
you know, like, what would you? I mean, have? you 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 you've hit the nail right on the head. I would say the same thing. I would just say that be patient, uh, learn the process before you actually uh, get biased decisions from uh, listening to other people. Before you listen to other people and implement it in your life, try to learn it for yourself. Uh, try to get as much exposure that you can from a professional. I always have stressed on the professional point of view. From a professional who's already in the field, it might take some extra dollars or extra uh, currency from wherever you belong, but always learn from a professional because that's where the, that's where the, like those are the people with experienced eyes. They know what's mm. right and what's wrong and they'll definitely help you. And from that's where you can, that can be a very good learning curve for you. And that can also help you also judge yourself. So that, that's my recommendation to anyone who's new, used, um, or are already in this field. Um, always, always, always very important. Know what you're doing and uh, take it slow. Like mm. don't, and, and always stay calm. Mm. Don't like. And, and, and understand that, you know, like, I guess, like we said earlier, not everything's all sunshine and rainbows, especially going through Balkan phases, you know? So understand physically things might not be very pretty. Right. But you know, the, overall what you're kind of doing for yourself, not just now, you know, what you're setting yourself up for going forwards and what you're potentiating and things like that. That's, that's where the real bang for your buck comes in, you know? So um, it's hey, like what Pratik said, was- understand the game. Hey, the earth was not formed in one day. It took billions of years for the burning ball mm-hmm. of lava to cool down. So, and then human human race. Was... I thought it took seven days. I've been I've been I've been lived my whole life as a lie. No, nope. you telling me this? No, nope, we're not we're not we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> we're not getting rid of half our audience. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. We're not talking but about that. Human race <laughs> took <laughs> billions of years oh, to on, form. There we go. Evolution took billions of years to form. You, so you can't just like put on muscle mass or lean muscle and gain over, overnight. That's not possible. So take your time, calm down, uh, relax. Let's Have bulk, sex. let's bulk, bro. <laughs> Have yeah, sex. Imagine like God came back with like a magic comeback, like just like dropping like bars and stuff like that. Hey. And like on the eighth <laughs> day, everyone gets mad gains in one day. And then you solve both your issues, you know, you got his side and got the one day thing, you know, imagine that. It's like, yeah, the standard will go from like, you know, 130 pounds to 220 pounds lean and just like boom, you know. You wake up. Captain America. That be, man? Oh, Cap- man. That's Captain America. Yeah, I'll be the John Cena version. <laughs> so, yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, let's wrap thanks, this up. Thanks, guys. We, that was a very big conversation that we had, but... Uh, No, I think we covered a lot of different experiences and, you know, thoughts and ideas on, um, you know, Balkan, basically Balkan, Balkan in general. Balkan, bruh. um, That's Balkan, Balkan, bruh. bruh. Yeah. So, uh, (laughs) Connor, any final words from you? Get huge. Get huge. Prantik? Small is the goal. Size is the price. Yeah. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Thank you for watching the Forge podcast. If you enjoyed it, we'd love for you to subscribe. If you want to find out more about us, check the description. And as always, thank you for watching.